Hello and welcome to Bristol Sport TV's new series, Meet the Boss. Well, whilst we're all continuing to live life in lockdown, we thought it would be a good opportunity to find out a little bit more about our sponsors and partners. Find out how they're coping with the current crisis, but also what makes their business tick and why they got involved with the sporting group. Well, I'm pleased to say that joining me today is fourth generation cider maker, Martin Thatcher. Martin, welcome to you. I hope you and all the family are keeping well down on the farm. Good morning, Lisa. Yes, we are. We're um, enjoying the sunny weather and we're all fit and healthy. Thank you. That's good to hear. It's lovely to see your beautiful backdrop. Is, is that a picture from the orchards? It is a stunning time of year at the moment. Um, Yes, if you were able to come to the farm here at Myrtle Farm, this time of year is just amazing because all our orchards are out in blossom. And if you walk out into the orchards, you can hear the bees buzzing around. And thankfully, they're not in lockdown. They're busy out pollinating our apple trees so that we get plenty of apples for this year's crop. It's good to hear that there are some positives coming out of this. I mean, it has been an incredible time, hasn't it? I mean, for, for you guys like us, uh, business pretty much came to a standstill almost overnight because, of course, a large part of your business is pubs and big festivals and sporting occasions. Yeah, I think this is a time where there's been some incredible stories. And in the news, we've seen the amazing work that uh, people in the NHS and carers and those people have done, but also all the frontline uh, workers have continued to keep the country moving and for us you know particularly lorry drivers people in supermarkets putting food on shelves those type of things and of course the farmers that are all out busy producing our food and for us our apples so there have been some incredible stories um, of the incredible things that people do on a day-to-day -day basis and Again, there's been some heartbreaking stories of, you know, pubs having to close, people being furloughed off. And, you know, that's that's really sad as well. So I think generally we have a lot to, um, a, a lot that's going on. But um, here at Myrtle Farm, we have an awful lot to be thankful for. And our team are amazing. They've done an amazing job. They've turned their hand to doing all sorts of different things. Uh, we're not producing cakes and delivering to pubs anymore. We're producing cans and bottles for supermarkets. So the whole team have turned their hand to focusing on that particular job. And it's been an amazing atmosphere to be able to do that. Well, you talk there about turning their hand to a different job. I mean, you guys, as a family business, you know, fourth generation, as I said, you've you've experienced some ups and downs within uh, uh, the business world for a number of years yet. And, and you yourself have been praised for your entrepreneurial skills. Is, is that where the direction has headed, you know, in the foreseeable future is obviously, you know, replenishing all of those supplies in supermarkets and where, where you can change the business? Um, I think it's very hard to know what's going to happen in the long term. And um, if I had a crystal ball, I'm sure I'd be uh, a very, very wealthy person. But in the short term, our view is, is we've got to keep our head down, get as much cider as we can to our hopefully thirsty customers in this nice weather uh, through the supermarket. And then we're really turning our mind to when the pubs open, how we can help and support them so that these... Uh, really important parts of many communities are able to open again as quickly and as smoothly as possible. Well, you paint an idyllic picture there of uh, life on the farm and some amazing times, I'm sure. Um, of course, you've been involved with our sporting group for a number of years now since the redevelopment, particularly, of course, uh, Thatchers have got exclusive pouring rights uh, with Keg Cider here and your involvement with our sports teams. Has there been one standout moment that you've had? Well, the, the one standout moment for me is when the bears came and visited us with Pat Lamb. Having the bears here at Myrtle Farm was a genuine pleasure and we were genuinely delighted to have them here. Such a delight. Honestly, everybody who met them said what a lovely bunch of people they were and how good they were, good manners, lovely to have around. And I think that for me really highlighted the team spirit, the leadership from the coach and the captain, and also just nice people. And I thought that was brilliant. That was that, that was the whole, do you know what? Everybody on site just said they were so nice. 
So oh. that was that was the moment. I mean, I'm sure lots of people talk about certain elements on the pitch, but for us, that was that was the bit that we all went. Yeah, that's really good. That, that is lovely to hear. And um, you, you talk about, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about this word of culture and how you build it. And, you know, for any business or sports team, it is crucial to their success. And it's, it's nice to hear that actually someone anecdotally reporting on it, it seems to filtrate right the way through the sporting team. And it isn't just an external message. It is actually something that's real. Yes, uh, I mean, I, I, I think we were all genuinely impressed by what they were doing and how they, they were. And, and I didn't get to spend too much time with them, but um, clearly there is a real team spirit of some some very uh, good young people and very well led. And I can understand why they have been so successful on the pitch. It all starts back yeah. at the culture. Yep, it certainly does all of the grassroots. And you, you um, talk about the men's team coming. Of course, you're involved with the women's team as well. And, and of course, what the boys do, the women are going to do as well. So they were up to the farm as well. I think we had to almost drag them away. <laughs> we had a lovely Saturday afternoon here with them and uh, they really enjoyed themselves. Uh, again, a nice, nice sunny afternoon and they were a delight to have on site. So um, coming back to Ashton Gate, um, of course, Thatcher's involved here. I think you've been involved since the redevelopment, particularly with uh, the pouring rights, exclusive pouring rights uh, for Cider Keg. How, how have you found getting involved? Because, of course, traditionally you were a little bit sort of nine miles uh, to the east uh, involved with Bath. But when you've got involved with uh, Bristol, it's been quite nice to come and watch Bath here as well. <laughs> Yes, I mean, I think uh, I'm personally in awe of what you've done and what uh, Bristol Sport have done at the stadium. The development uh, looks uh, fantastic and um, it's great to come and enjoy watching rugby at such a great venue. And I think the vision that uh, Steve and John and the rest of Bristol Sport have for sport within Bristol, I think is fantastic and that's great for the city and obviously great for Bristol Sport and their sporting teams. Now, I know that you're, you know, you've been a long-term rugby fan, you know, you like the game, but that isn't that isn't a reason to just get involved in sports sponsorship. There has to be a return on investment. What was it that attracted you and what has it done? Because obviously Thatchers have been very, very successful with their own advertising campaigns, you know, the television adverts that you feature in. What was it that made you think, actually, no, this is something that we want to be seen affiliated to? Well, Bristol is, is just up the road for us and we, we view Bristol as right in our heartland. And, you know, we wanted to be part of that, uh, I suppose, the beating heart of the city and sport is a very large part of that. And to be able to give something back and be involved right in the middle of our heartland is so important for us. And Bristol sport is at the all the people we've met there have been lovely. They've been very helpful and, you know, a joy to work with. So, so this has been, this has been a, a great thing to do and um, something that we thoroughly enjoyed. I mean, one of the big aspects, as, as you, you are well aware, is, is about um, being involved with the local community. And of course, it's something that Thatchers feel very strongly about. So I guess it's a, a, a like minds coming together, isn't it, of supporting your local community? Well, I think for these partnerships to work well, there has to be uh, like-minded uh, thought. And um, I know Bristol do a lot with your academy and with the uh, with the city, but at Thatcher's, we've got our own foundation, which we have supported uh, local causes, very local to us, um, and some very good causes. And, and the disappointing thing is, is there are so many people who need help that it would all obviously be great if we could help more. But um, we do we do our bit within our community because that's really important to us. The people who live live locally to us. There are there are the people who come to work for us. There are apple suppliers, the people we've known for generations, and of course there are customers as well. I mean, you, you touch on the hardships, uh, of course, that, you know, are ever increasing. And obviously, due to the current pandemic, that that world is unfortunately about to get a lot harder at a time when, you know, people that you're very close to, like farming community, but also the pub industry, they were facing hard times anyway. Yes. Yeah. And I think we are 
particularly worried about uh, the pub and hospitality industry, particularly in the Southwest, because that's our heartland of how can we support them when they are finally allowed to open? And, you know, how does how does that support help them to reopen and then continue to be successful? The, the difficulty is, is, of course, we are missing at the moment the summer, which is always the best time of trading for these pubs, particularly the country pubs and the local pubs. And, you know, that's that's going to be make it very hard for them. Mm, indeed. Um Obviously, none of us can predict when it is going to be safe for everyone to be reopened. We know it will come. Um, history tells us that it will, you know, as Captain Tom Moore, I should say Colonel Tom Moore, uh, says the sun will shine again. We will all come back. Um, in the meantime, it is about evolving and, as you say, adapting and getting through the current crisis. And I guess one of the bonuses is, is about the environment. We touched it on it at the start, is that actually maybe there could be a bumper crop because of this pause on the environment and giving that a chance to reset. I mean, I, I, I'm not an expert on the environment. I, I know what happens out on our farm. I know our bees have been phenomenally busy and the weather has been very good for our blossom set. And therefore, that is always the start of getting a good crop. Now, what we'd really like is some sunshine to uh, get the apples to ripen, to get the sugar, to make the alcohol, and also to um, develop the tannins and the flavours in the cider. So um, our hope is now for a nice, nice, sunny, warm summer. Yeah, I, th I think all of us are hoping for a sunny, warm shower. Uh, as we had that taster of April, as you say, and now it's gone a little bit cold, but hopefully the sun will come back uh, and it'll be a bumper crop. And I guess then obviously this year is going to be very, very difficult, but I guess that could look positively towards next year. Well, um, as a family business, we always look quite a long way ahead. And even uh, we've planted a few more trees. We've planted a new variety to us this year on the farm called Early Bird. And it will be no surprise that it is an early cropping apple uh, to try some new varieties. So we won't know the results of that probably for five to seven years now. So we're always looking a long way ahead. And um, I think the exciting thing about a business like this is all the lovely uh, things we do, pulling traditions back. So we have a big trial in one of our orchards on uh, what we call the classic varieties. So we've got about 20 varieties, very old varieties that probably my great grandfather would have grown. And we've planted them out in an orchard to test what sort of cider it makes. So um, there's always something exciting going on and there's always something to look forward to. I love the idea that we might have an exclusive, you know, that you might have given us a heads up of a new th new cider's <laughs> range. Called, is Early Bird going to be the name? I love it. Maybe maybe something related to the current crisis. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to wait a few years to find out on that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> right, we'll get you back on in about five to seven yeah. years, not long to wait. Um, of course, yeah. you know, you talk about that different different types. There are so many different types of, of cider that you guys have, have, have released over the years. Uh, you know, one of our, one of my favourites is the Thatcher's Rosa. You know, it is about adapting that market to different drinks, isn't it? There are many, many different ciders that are consumed within the uh, stadium and, and often many songs surrounding your cider. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, yes, the the great thing is, is we have so many apples to choose from. We have uh, over 450 different varieties on the farm here in Sanford. So we have a lot of apples to choose from. And every year we, we make small batches of cider from these apples to, uh, to try them out. And Rosé was a result of doing some work quite a few years ago on, on some specific varieties of apples. Um, this year we have launched, well, in the last few weeks, we have launched our lemon cider, which has gone down brilliantly in this summer sunshine. And again, you know, an exciting uh, new development for us and uh, it's been very well received. Ooh, there's, there's one I'm gonna have to try and get. I haven't tested that one. So, uh, right, I'll add that to my list. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> what, what? Yeah, it's a long list, trust me. Um, what is it like when, you know, obviously I know you're, you're often here in the stadium, you're here for rugby games and, and of course the football games as well. Um, what's it like as a family business hearing those songs and hearing that, that sort of echo around Ashton Gay? It, it must be quite a strange feeling for you as, as, you know, the originator of it. 
Do you know what? I feel uh, privileged, honoured, I don't know, humbled by it. I, I just, uh, I can't, I have to pinch myself. I think it is absolutely amazing. And I, um, you know, I really appreciate the people singing the songs and um, the support we get from, from many, many people in Bristol. And as a fourth generation uh, family business, it's so good to know that the people out there doing these sort of things. Um, it, it, it's just fantastic. Yeah, I, can, I can't describe it. I get um, I get a, a tingly feeling on the back of the neck, a hair stand up on the back of the neck. It's it's so good. I, there's there's nothing better. Yeah, I, it must it must be fascinating, and, and also that idea for you. You know, you say fourth generation there for what it must have been like at the very beginning on the farm. Just talk us through that and how the family, because that would have been a transition going into cider making. Well, uh, my great grandfather came to Sanford uh, in 1902 as a carpenter, and in those days the carpenters had to. Uh, make the coffin, so it was effectively the undertaker. And he didn't like that, so he bought 34 acres off of uh, the Miss Parslow sisters at Myrtle Farm, which we're still based. And um, he started as a cider maker, uh, started as a farmer, and he, he had cattle and sheep and cows and all the rest of it. And he had an orchard on the farm and he made some cider. And I suppose the truth of the matter is, he paid his farm workers some of the cider he made and he drank probably the rest of it himself. And, you know, that's how it was on farms in those days. So, um, you know, many things have changed, but I think the tradition of we're a farming based business, it's about, um, it's about family, but most importantly, it's about taking amazing apples off the farm and turning it into fantastic cider. Mm. It's funny, I've talked to quite a lot of, um, sort of CEOs and businessmen and talking about what, what makes them get up in the day, what makes them tick. And, and it's, it's interesting, it always comes back to actually a love of, of what they do and, and how they enjoy it. And it, it comes through talking to you, just how much you love being on the farm. But sometimes that comes with its own expectations of a family business. You know, what, was it always your intended route? You always thought you were going to take over the family business? Um, I, I didn't, I hadn't really intended to take over the family business. And when I left school originally, um, I had, I didn't have as much interest in cider as I did farming. And I, I spent a lot of time out on the farm looking after cattle and sheep and growing um, cereals and, and not necessarily growing apples. But that was, that was my real passion to start off with was, was on the farm. So I always absolutely love it when I'm allowed to go out and get on a tractor or drive a JCB or walk around the orchards. It's, it's just so great to get back to doing those things. Yeah, and being out in the fresh air, especially when it's nice weather, but it's, it's hard yards being a farmer. Well, um, yes, it is. I mean, it, it, it is clearly hard work, but at times out in the summer sunshine, out in the field, out in the blue, beautiful orchards. I mean, there are some huge upsides as well. Yeah, I can tell that you love being outside, uh, obviously yeah, on the farm as well, but I think you guys have been down and visited our, uh, well, training ground that's got a lot of JCBs and diggers on it at the moment, the Bears training ground. Yes, yeah. Well, uh, you know, all these things, they, they all um, need JCBs to get them into the, into the perfect state before you start using them. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of hard work has been going on. What's it been like? Obviously, as, as one of the partnerships, you know, uh, one of the involvements with Bears is you get to go to the training ground, the current one, but also get a sneak preview of, of the new training site up at Phelan. What's it been like when you've been walking around those places um, and chatting to Pat and, and Mark Tainton about how effectively their business is run and insights that you've got from that and vice versa? Well, I think having talked to uh, people at Bristol Sport and particularly Pat for the for the rugby side, I mean, what I've taken from it is his leadership and the way he's developed that team to play as a team and be a very tight team, but also be very respectful for other people. And I think for all businesses, whether you're making cider or creating making nuts and bolts or whatever, can learn from just the way that that team has molded together to be um, 
a really tight unit that is a very well performing team and i think that's what we're all looking for in our businesses is that team togetherness and all working for a common goal martin it's been great to talk to you uh, i look forward to sharing a glass of cider with you uh, back here at the stadium soon i hope so thank you very much i'm looking forward to it well, that's it from us for this week. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. And as Martin said, it is all about taking care of each other through this difficult time. Well, that chat has certainly whetted my appetite, so I'm off to enjoy a nice cold glass of that cloudy lemon cider. Until next week, stay safe, stay well. Goodbye.